So we're nearly at the end of our Fairlane project. About all we've got to do is put some of the interior back together. Got to buy an ashtray for it because that's missing. Bit of cleaning up. I've got to repaint the rear bumper. This car's going to be for sale. I'm going to stick it on eBay for $24.99. Um, starting bid, so two and a half grand. It's a pretty good car for that. Um, so if anyone's interested, you can send me a message. But uh, this is where we are so far. Now we've got to keep this back before we paint it. Um, now some of this rough stuff, you're supposed to use scotch bright pads. They're available in different grades. There's a green one, which is coarser again. We're supposed to use this one here for keying back. Um, but some of this rough stuff's a little bit big for scotch bright. So um, we're a bit coarse. So I'm going to wet rub it. I'm just using a little bit of um, 400. You can see it's hit something blue. Uh, my son thought that was a smurf. He thought it was quite funny. So we just go over it. Get rid of some of the rough stuff. Now, I'm not going to take it right back. I said in the other one I would, but I'm not going to. Coming. What? Really? Alright. Alright, this is our painting mask. It's a 3M mask. Absolutely brilliant bit of kit. Uh, but they do have a shelf life uh, in that the filtration starts to fail after a while. Uh, they have a two stage filter. They've got a, a particle filter here which catches all dust and overspray and this sort of thing. And also a removable. Um, I think it's a charcoal filter. I'll pull it apart and we'll have a look inside. Don't know how these come apart. I might have to cut it. Uh, and we, we're going to replace it obviously with new stuff. Now, this mask, when I use it, it does smell a bit sort of thinnery. So I know it's sort of had it now. Um, so I'm going to put this new set of cartridges on. There's rubber gaskets there and one way valve so that you can drag air through but it can't push back the other way. Always important to get the right equipment, the right cartridges. There are different types. Um, this is an organic and vapors one, so it's right for spray painting, and they just click over. Now the gentleman I bought these from, which way do they go? There we go. The gentleman I bought these from provided these and also a, a set of ten dust filters, and you can see. There's only four in there, he short changed me, so I'm on the I'm sort of in communication with him at the moment to replace the other ones that are missing. We just screw those on and uh, put these pads on as well. And they just click over. And that gives us the protection we need. Always a good idea to make sure it fits well around your nose and face. I don't know how it works with blokes with beards. They can't seal too well then. Now whenever you're painting it's always important to, to seek the advice of a qualified painter. Um, I'm using acrylic products, they're very DIY friendly. I'm not interested in using 2-pack. There are isocyanate free 2-pack paint products. Um, I'm not turning that around the other way, I think it goes the other way. Which are supposed to be safe to use but they're very strong in their vapours. And inside these cartridges you can see it's got like a, a, a a fabric sort of filter and it's all full of activated charcoal particles and these do have a very defined life so if you can smell it they're supposed to be replaced they have a use by date on them I think the use by date on these is 2017 but you can see inside it it's just charcoal okay a couple of products I'm going to use today obviously masking tape and a bit of newspaper I'm going to use some primer this is some leftover primer I had with a flex aid in it um, it's important to use a flex aid, that's this stuff here, because we're painting a bumper bar. If we don't use that, the paint's going to dry rigid and it's going to crack like an old porcelain toilet. So we need to use something that's going to give the paint uh, some flexibility. Now the problem with using flex aids, if you don't use enough, you still get a crack, um, or a couple of cracks, but if you use too much, it affects the adhesion. So we need to make sure we get the mixture of that right. Um, obviously prep wash, which is just basically wax and grease remover. I'm using a multi-purpose thinner. Probably should use an acrylic thinner. This is an acrylic product. Um, acrylic thinner will let it um, go off a little bit slower, but can shrink back over repairs. There's no repairs in it, but it does, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just using a multi thinner. Um, this is a liter of dynamic white paint coat H, so that's the right color for the car, and a couple of different guns. Now I'm only going to touch prime. 
bits where I've rubbed through and I'm just going to use a touch-up gun for that and I'm going to finish it off with a finishing gun which my brother's used and I don't think he's cleaned very well so I might have to re-clean that before I use that. Just going around roughing up some of the existing paint that's there. There are some light cracks here so I'm going to have to take that right off and the reason I think that's happened is these have been painted on before they're stuck down. I'm just going to go over this with a bit of prep wash, make sure it's nice and clean, get rid of any, any muck. Now it's quite a warm day today and I can use um, a retarder in the thinner. Acrylic paint goes off very, very quickly. Um, and you can slow that process and let it sort of flatten out by using a retarder. I'm not going to do that. That's it. How are you going? Now watch the side that doesn't scratch. <laughs> All right, have a resty. What do you think? Wow, look at that. Cool bananas. All right, so the bumper's painted. I've got a bloody run there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I have to rub it out. But it looks good. I've also painted in here on that black grill, so it does look a lot better. Just gonna have to buff the rest of the car. It's the right colour, but that is looking a lot better. Okay, so that's nice and level and even. So I'm just gonna try and buff it out. Beautiful. Look at that. All right, it's starting to look like a car. Running into a problem with these cornering lights. I think these are designed to come on at night time when you put the indicators on to sort of light up the corner where you're going. Uh, this one was actually full of water, it was up to there. And, you know, it's a bit, still got water in there, it's a little bit manky. So, it's sort of a complex curve, I'm not sure if I can repair that. But I might have to find a new one, I'm going to try and save a bit of money. Normally people ask about 80 or so dollars for those, but we'll see how we go with that. It's so much nicer with the painted bumper. Beauty. Better finished off. The rest of the car is quite dirty, but once it's washed and Given a light polish, the paint on this car is quite good. It doesn't need cutting back. Um, oh, the bloke that had it before me gave it a quick polish and ended up with polishing compound residue all over the place, which was a mess. But the actual standard of the paint's really good. Well, isn't this Fairlane looking beautiful now? Front bumper's all finished and it's on. Tiny bit of growling from the power steering pump there. So there's still air uh, in the system. It's taken a long time to bleed out. Um, just st still haven't washed it or anything. It's a little bit dirty. It's looking beautiful, isn't it? Um, what have we done? Now the boot had that horrible um, mark here, and it rubbed it out. And they've ended up um, sort of blending the paint in. The problem with it was, though, um, if you go to buff it after you've blended it in, it's going to leave a mark where you've been. So I've rubbed the whole boot back and I've clear coated it but that's just off the gun, so it still has to be colour sanded and buffed out. And at the moment, just doing a little bit of work on the uh, on the rear bumper. The rear bumper's looking shabby now, but um, that's getting there slowly. Still haven't put a lot of the interior together. Whoops. Stereo though is brilliant. Really, heaps and heaps of bass on it. I'm really happy with that, so that's looking good. We're missing a knob there, and this knob here, 
pulls out um, to be a fader, but the, the switch itself has got a bit of damage on it. I think I might have another one, I'm not sure. But that's that's going really, really well. Um, but everything's looking really mad on this car. The antenna's working. Even when you, you go for um, CD, I haven't got a CD to put in the stacker. Um, I'll put a CD in, I'll see how that goes. I'll put a few CDs in. It's, um, it's all working really, really well. There goes the antenna. Are you going to have half mast or full? There she goes, up full length. Oh, look at that. It's really, really working well. need to rub it back. Now, color sanded how to do that, we always do it wet, and what we're doing is we're taking the tops of the clear off, so there's no pits and lands in the paint, it's dead level, then we can buff it and get a good uh, good high sheen on it. Now to do this, you have to be very careful, you can feel when you first start color sanding, or wet sanding if you like, you can feel it running over the top, then it starts to bite in, and when it bites in you have to be very careful now, after I've done it, it's getting a bit dry now, after you do it, you screed it off, you just make sure it's nice and flat, beautiful and flat there. Um, I've already done a lot of it, but I just wanted to demonstrate, you can still see there, I'm sort of looking along it, white's a very hard colour to get sort of dead level because it's very hard to see over it. Now, the water that's coming off here is a milky colour, and that's not the white, that's the clear. It actually looks a little bit milky. Um, and that's good, but if I go through that and it starts coming off white, then I know I'm into the paint. If you hear it whistle, you know you've got some muck under the paper, so you've got to take it off straight away. I've got my um, dust coat underneath the boot there to prop it up, so I can get to these edges without scratching up the paint on the guards and that way when I buff it off I can run the buff off that edge uh, without any danger of it rubbing through any corners or edges. We've got to keep them isolated. And I reckon we're nearly ready for the areas there I've got to do. Alright a couple of products here. Here's our buff. I have a, a, a soft hat on it. There's a couple of different types of these you can get. Um, some of course will have a slightly harsher foam for different finishes. There's probably more colours than what I've got here. I've just got the white and grey one. Most of the time I just use that one. It's lovely and soft. When you buy these things they come with a Velcro type rigid disc and a landfill pad. Uh, the best thing to do with these is don't go, don't go anywhere near a car with them. Uh, because these hard edges when you're going into corners can burn through the paint uh, in a matter of a millisecond. So they're no good for cars. They're absolutely rubbish where it comes to cars. So I'm not going to use those. I'm going to stick with this one. Now, the compound I'm using is Menzerna. It's a German product. This is Power Gloss. It's an old bottle. There's not much left in here. This is a cutter. It has a gauge onto how much it cuts. This is quite a coarse cutter. And then, of course, we finish it off with intensive polish. This is very fine. Again, it uses that gauge. So there's a little bit of cutting in there, but most of it is, um, is polishing. And, of course, I've just got a spray bottle of water, so that'll just when I go to buff it, I can keep it a little bit cooler. It is a warm day today, so I don't want it to burn if we burn the paint. Now when you use these, on the top, this direction of rotation, it's a slow starting tool. We're going this way, so that when we come off panels, we want to hold it off like that, so it's running off the edge, like that. If we put it on like this, it's going to burn through that edge, and we're going to mess up our work. So we need to always be mindful of direction, direction of rotation. So again, I'm going to go off the top this way, probably in the way. I'm going to come across this like here, because it's going this way, and it's coming off that edge. If it hits the window, it doesn't matter, but there is a rubber or plastic strip there. We don't want to do that. We don't want to hit it because it's going to burn. trying to show you the difference. This part here hasn't been buffed yet and that bit we have. Um, look it's not perfect and I'm certainly not going to get much back on this car 
but it has to look good. And that's getting there slowly. Right. <laughs> Let's try to find dull spots so I can. Your hand looks great, Charlie. And that's a bit. Yeah, the annoying part is that this itches the back of my ear. Who cares? Oh, that'll. Yeah, it'll wear in. I've, if you're anything like me, you've got a massive head. That's that always fit. <laughs> Well, I've just got to paint this manky bumper, but I reckon that doesn't look too bad. So, there we go. I'll upload another video in a couple of weeks, and uh, by then it should be finished. See you later.